Hello, welcome to Impact the World. And for this week, we wanted to give you an opportunity to experience a piece of my work. It's called The Heart Reset of the 21st Century. And it's part of a channeled workshop that I created for my members community, The Portal. It was a very interesting channel. It took me by surprise and I was curious about what my guides, the Z's, wanted to bring through as concerned to the frequency of our hearts and how that's going to play a major part as we go through the rest of this century. So I hope you enjoy the message and the channel. With channeling, it's always great to just let it wash over you and see what it sparks in and for you. Sometimes it's something that a channeled message will say that can reshape your mind or your awareness. Other times it's just being in the energy of something that is being transmitted from that dimension of reality that can put us into our own intuitive space, our own visionary space. So some people report having aha moments or their own visionary rewiring while they listen to channeled information. So we hope you enjoy this. The full four hour workshop is available as part of my members community, The Portal. So if you'd like to go deeper with me and all aspects of my work, do check out The Portal. We'll put a link underneath this video or in the show notes if you're listening. Thank you for tuning in to Impact the World and we hope you enjoy the heart reset of the 21st century. Welcome to part four. I'm Lee. I'm an intuitive. I'm a channeler and I'm a sound healer. And in this workshop today, we've been looking at channeling and the new human soul. And in this final part, I'm going to turn it over to my guides who had a few different areas that they wanted to speak about today. One of them is our relationship with pets and animals. One of them is our relationship with Earth, which they call, it for this channel, the expanding heart of the universe. And lastly, our relationship to oneness, which they call the highest octave that any of us can experience while we're embodied on Earth. So without further ado, I will hand it over to them and we will take a look at each of those three conversations. So it won't surprise you to know that I do a lot of my work intuitively, right? Kind of makes sense. And uh, as I was just preparing a few of the themes for this workshop in advance, I was getting various different titles from my guides as to what they wanted to bring through. I was pleased and uh, surprised when they said they wanted to talk to us about our connections with pets and our animals because I don't remember uh, them really going into detail on that in any big way so far, but they were very clear that it needed to be a part of this. So I will take 20 seconds or so to switch into channel mode and you can get yourself comfortable. And as ever, remember this conversation that we're about to have is designed to spur and invoke a conversation in yourself whether it's about the things you hear that give you little aha moments, or whether it's just you experiencing the energy of this in your own body. So, enjoy. <clears throat> hmm. Good, uh, yes. So, mm, we are aware that our topic is to be on animals and in the case of many of you, your pets, those beings that you bring into your homes and have relationships with, so important to so many of you and quite an isolated romance, the relationship with a pet. So instead of your broader relationship to the animal kingdom, as it were, your relationships with your pets are often the way that you have a deep, trusting and loving bond with an animal. And that is a doorway to far more than you can imagine. For the reason we wanted to bring animals and pets into the conversation at this point is 
they themselves are deeply sensory and intuitive. Now, they may not be intuitive in the way it would look to you, uh, for they are not using human language and the faculty of the mind where language is concerned in the same way that you are. That is fairly unique to the human, although there are certain species on your planet who have a very developed language. It just looks different uh, than yours. No, why we bring them up is because they are deeply connected to the realms of energy uh, through their sensory bodies and also through their ability to see through what many humans uh, cannot. So, for example, we will turn our attention to your pets. Uh, we have referred to this before, uh, but pets are wonderful energy movers in a house. So, if you have a pet that is free roaming in a house, and we are aware some of you have pets that are a little more contained or caged for various reasons. If you have a free roaming pet, and we will here choose dogs and cats as the primary example for you, they are wonderful at moving the energy in a house, and specifically the lower parts of the house. So it is not common that many of you get down on your floors and move around a lot, uh, but it is common that your feet are walking pathways through your houses all of the time. Well, these little beings with their mm, mm, way of navigating your house are constantly clearing the energy in the lower parts of your homes as they run around the house and roll around the house and exist in that realm. So even your larger dogs, for example, are still covering areas that very few of you inhabit with your mind. So number one, it is quite nice for your pets that your minds are not mostly living on the floor in your house for it leaves that realm of your place of life and living uh, fairly unencumbered from the human mind. If you were to measure the frequency of a house where a pet is present and then one where a pet is not, you would notice that the energy is far more, shall we say, uh, circulated and energized rather than stagnant. This is not a better or bad thing for those of you who don't have pets and are suddenly panicking that your house energy is stagnant. All we mean is the life and the being of that pet is not only running around your house and generating its own energy and generating energy through its relationship with you. Your pets are very tapped into the spirit realm. Some of them can see uh, other beings, other elemental energies in and around the house. Uh, you will notice sometimes your pets get very focused on something that they seem to be seeing that you can't see, and there are many pets that are able to perceive and pick up on this. But even those who do not see it or understand what they are perceiving in form, they are deeply connected to it through their spines. Their spines are the parts of their bodies that get signals uh, from everything around them. And so whenever the energy changes in a house, uh, you will notice uh, that a pet will have a response. So for example, mm, pay attention to the people that your pets like and feel safe with uh, when someone enters the room, and pay attention to the people that your pets back away from, stay away from, or leave the room when they enter. They are deeply sensitive to energy. So. Assuming your pet is well adjusted and balanced and not dealing with trauma from humans or abusive times in their life, a pet that is well adjusted will give you good indications about how safe or welcome they feel by the energy of another person. Now, we should clarify here that some people are just not trained to see pets as people. They just don't see it that way, so they ignore the quote unquote animal. And that, of course, is great, uh, greatly risky for the animal, for if they are ignored, if their spirit isn't seen, especially as they are usually smaller than all of you as humans, uh, they are at risk. So in those cases, the pet will leave the room for those reasons. They do not feel safe, not because they are under threat, but because they are not seen. That is one response they will have. But the other response is the senses in a pet uh, can tell you a lot about a human being who has agendas they are perhaps not being open or honest about, or are knowingly or unknowingly concealing from you. Pets 
feel energy and they feel the heart energy in a room very acutely. It is why so many of your pets are like your children and your babies. Uh, they are. Uh, there is no great difference. It is just uh, an interspecies relationship and love. That is all. So the other side that we want to bring to your attention about your pets is many of you have been around with these beings before. And it is not necessarily that your, shall we say, dog or cat will be your reincarnated grandmother, for example. But uh, what can happen for pets, and happens quite commonly, is that they start to tap into not only the aspects of you as a human personality, but they also have relationships with all of your beings and guides. And just as it is the case that a loved one who passes over, who was very important to you, can become a part of your guide team. At least some of the time they are present watching over you and paying attention and helping where they can and sending messages or signals. Perhaps the song that they used to love comes on the radio whenever they are present and they use this as a way of reaching you. It is also true that your pets pick up on your guides. They pick up on your guide teams. Again, not necessarily in a highly conscious way, but they are dealing with the totality of you. They are dealing with you, the sensory being, not you, the human being. You may be speaking to them from the vantage point of being a human parent to them, uh, but they are actually in relationship with your aura. So if uh, your pet starts to remind you of uh, someone that you knew before who was passed over and you wonder if they are the reincarnation, we will say that most pets do not necessarily take on mm, 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 human reincarnations, but uh, they are uh, wired a little differently. Uh, they do tap into the group and the team around uh, those of you who are mm, 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 especially sensitive and intuitive. They tap into those aspects of you and they reflect and relay them to you. It is not completely out of the question that those who have been incarnate as humans reincarnate as animals and pets. It is not completely mm, 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 unknown or unheard of, but it is less common these days. Uh, there was a period in human history where that was taking place a little bit more uh, between the 10th and 20th century, uh, but at this point it is not so common, for it is not so needed. Uh, you see, as you are becoming more multidimensional in consciousness, none of you are quite so fixed that you need to come back as one soul into an animal's body. You get to tap into the consciousness of the animal through the ethers. So a literal physical reincarnation is not necessarily needed. But this is why so many of your pets will remind you of people you have known and loved. They are reflecting that back to you and you are seeing that in them through the love you feel for them, the connection you have with them, and the energetic imprint that takes place between the two of you. Many of you have heard that your pets and animals will, shall we say, reflect or become you. And this is partly true, but you will notice they only do it when you're around. Ha! Huh. So when you're not there, they will not behave in the same way. It is why uh, someone who mm, either is in your household or looks after your pet has a very different experience of them when you're not there. It is not to say they will not have characteristics that are set, but Human pets learn to communicate with their human just as you learn to communicate with your pet. It is not through language per se, but it is through energy. And they will place their attention and their focus on you in a certain way in a moment of interaction that you then perceive to be their character. But actually, if you were to privately observe them alone uh, for a few days when you weren't in the room, you would see all kinds of sides of their behavior. Uh, that they do not need to employ when you are not around. So your pets are their own vast entities. Uh, they are far bigger than the bodily being you often see them as, but it is very important as a bridge, especially in recent times, recent centuries, human consciousness has reached a point where the love can get even stronger and deeper for more people within their animal relationships. Now, there have always been those of you who have incarnated on the planet as guardians of the animals. You came here as a guardian of the animals, and it is 
animals that are your favorite, are your mm, most understood group, you might find humans quite baffling, bewildering or disappointing. Uh, so you come back as a guardian of the animals often because you have had your own incarnations in and around the animal kingdom. You haven't always been incarnate as an animal before, uh, but energetically you've been working with bringing balance to the animal kingdom when you are not incarnate as a human. So you reincarnate as a human to see what you can do and see how you can advocate. This is why your lives between the lives can be so important. You may have a life before you incarnate as an animal advocate where you spend a great deal of time understanding the path of animal welfare on the planet and what is missing and what is needed so that when you come back you can help to move the timeline for the animal kingdom in a favorable direction. For animals are meant to go with you. You are seeing at the moment a great deal of extinction events that do not need to be happening and that have been somewhat manipulated. Uh, so as more of that is understood in the coming decades, there will be even more of you who will advocate for the well-being of the animal kingdom and species that are not human on the planet. But pets are the bridge and the doorway to that. They help open the human heart to something beyond the self, which in turn is a spiritual uh, moment for the human being. For you are quite good at loving or accepting that which looks like you, uh, and you actually need to go far beyond that to enter multidimensional oneness, which we will talk about shortly. And so pets are a wonderful bridge to not only the other world, but to love. They are a bridge to a purer part of you that is a little more free of your mind, where you recognize the vulnerability and the strength in these beings that bring you so much joy. And it reminds you of a true bond that still has dependency, by the way. Some of you idealize your pets a little too much. They are dependent on you, so of course they are bonded to you. But there's nothing wrong with that. That's how life works. That's how humanity works. Uh, but what we are saying to you is those bonds can be so deep and can be so healing for those of you who are aligned with animals in that way. For it is free of some of the human drama, human conflict, and human restriction. It is a very pure relationship that many of you get to have. So uh, we just wanted to take a moment to ask you to sit with and consider your relationships with your pets and animals in a slightly wider way. For there is so much going on in there, those relationships just as there is with other human beings. The difference is they are wired for the sensory. They can't not be wired for the sensory. And the only time uh, pets' senses get uh, shut down in a way that is, mm, shall we say, detrimental, is when they are over-controlled, over-contained, or uh, we will say over-pampered. Mm, when they have been so reduced in their faculties to look after themselves uh, that they don't have to pay attention to anything, they can become what you might uh, call a little zombified in their awareness, for they don't have to do anything. Now, the role of the pet is already uh, a reduction somewhat for the animal, for uh, the animal that used to be roaming in the outside world, uh, fending for itself, is suddenly domesticated. But what we will tell you is this. Domestication of many of your animals and your pets gives them an entirely experience of consciousness, an entirely different experience of consciousness gives them a chance to have a very different experience of who they are and elevate their own consciousness in a different way to if they were in the outside world. Not better, not worse, just different. And so, mm, while it is not always the case that uh, all pets know which humans they are going to, uh, anyone who chooses to mm, be in and around a pet that incarnates is having a fascinating view of the human, meaning uh, the teams uh, of guides uh, that are around pets are a little different, uh, but it is a wonderful way to observe the human being when you see them in relationship with a pet. So some of the guides who have spent time with humans and their pets stay on the side of the pet 
so as to observe human interaction. And this can inform a great deal about love. And many, before they have reincarnated as a human being, have spent time observing this relationship between pet and human in order to access a little more of the purity of heart and of love that exists in those relationships before incarnating so as to hopefully bring a little more purity of heart and love to all relationships on earth. And that is the gift of your relationship with animals. It expands the love, the connection and the bond that is possible. And for any who sees animals as other or feels afraid because they do not understand the species or how to interact, it is a shame for to be able to fully love another being in spirit, not necessarily because they are a human, is to be able to trust, know and love spirit. And that is what the bonds between species help you represent and create. You get to create multidimensionality. You get to create love free of some of the conditions and the rules that are placed upon the way that humans can create love with other humans. Good. In peace and in love to all. Now the Zs are going to speak to us about our relationship with Earth, which they call the expanding heart of the universe. So get comfy and here we go. <clears throat> hmm. Good. Hmm. You are on Earth for a job. Hmm. It is easy to forget that sometimes and even some of your, you know, we will say, spiritual or religious teachings would give you other ideas about why you are here on earth. Mm, it might be a little more focused on the personal. You are here to learn lessons or clear karma or uh, to mm, become something new. And all of that is well and good and has its place. But for those of you who are incarnate at this time in human history, you are here on earth uh, for a job. You have a job to do here and it is a job that many will never be aware of and that is okay. Uh, that is not worse or bad. It is simply the case that they are living their life and through living their life they get the opportunity to do their job. Uh, but your job here on earth in this time is to usher in a new era of heart consciousness. For heart consciousness is two things here. Number one, it is a signature of Earth. It is a signature of humanity. It is one of the highest places that a human can find themselves living in, heart consciousness. And it is also one of the places that has been distorted, diminished and damaged throughout human history in order to, shall we say, take the Earth in a different direction to the direction that you are actually going. Earth's position in the universe is highly important where heart consciousness is concerned. So we understand that from your human perspective, you are looking at it through the lens of your life, your collective, this time in history. But from our perspective, it is all far bigger than that. Uh, you will be here for a certain amount of years in your lifetime. And it may seem like a lot of years for those of you who live a long life, but we assure you, in the eyes of the soul, it is but a moment. But it is a very important moment. And you are one of three generations who are here to usher in a very important century on Earth, the 21st century. Uh, this is the transformation time for Earth. And a lot will, uh, as you have heard, fall away, change, reform, but a lot will be born in this century. You are essentially laying down the groundwork and the foundation for a whole new way of being on Earth that draws to a close the cycle that ended with the 20th century. It is why many of you are aware of 2012 as a marker point. And while 2012 uh, is a good access point, 
we will say that actually the consciousness on Earth started to shift around uh, the year 2000. And by the year 2007, 2008, you were already entering into 2012 consciousness. It is why you had so many dramatic world events in that first 12 or so years. And of course, you could argue that ever since then, those dramatic events have kept coming. Well, consciousness does not shift by itself. You do not tend to, as a human being, open a heart that is a little more closed without having some heartbreak or some epiphany, some breakthrough. So a lot of the events that you see taking place on Earth that we understand you see as tragic. Uh, we will give you an example here. Mm, we understand the tragedy that many of you felt when Princess Diana uh, was uh, found dead. And none of you expected this. And yet, uh, her greatest act uh, it was in a way her death. Uh, not necessarily that would have been her choosing. And there was much, of course, that she did in her life to uh, bring heart through because she herself knew all too well what a wounded heart felt like. But see how she became an emblem of heart consciousness in her death. In her death, the hearts of not only a nation, but a world came alive in ways that they were not expecting to come alive. So the reason we point to this is not in any way to diminish the loss of that woman or the human grief for those who knew her and those who would wish she was still here alive today, but for you to understand the energetic eruptions that take place through sometimes cataclysmic events or tragic events, they are the ways that hearts start to open. And it is a messy process sometimes for a heart will open for a while through grief and then will close down, perhaps even firmer or harder because it does not know how to cope with loss or change or transformation. That is why so many of you who are here doing your job on earth right now, you are here to usher in support and nurture heart consciousness on earth. So you may be among those who are bemoaning the way the earth looks or the way people are behaving. But if uh, the other side of you is also spending time helping others feel more comfortable with their feelings, their heart, their dreams, their desires, anything that pertains from their soul, then you are one who is helping birth the new earth through being a custodian for heart energy. And it will be true that most of you who do this work, you will know great heartbreak. Uh, none of you who do this work will have been born pure and open and wide and remained that way all through your life. Some of you will have had to fight very hard to reclaim your sensitivity when it was bruised and battered. Some of you today may be fighting very hard to keep your heart alive. Uh, the part of you that wants to, mm, shall we say, see harmony in the world, feel harmony in the world. The heart and high heart consciousness belongs to oneness where it sees inclusivity for all. It sees a hive mentality at work where you are part of a hive. It is not this dog eat dog hierarchical mentality that you are both in some ways enslaved in right now on your planet. We say that not to scare you, just to give you the facts but also that you will see people you know playing out because it is a virus, an energy virus, the uh, heartless hierarchy that exists on planet Earth. This idea that a mind mm, can come up with all of the practical needs for people while ignoring the damage done emotionally. Emotional damage comes back to haunt you, by the way. People speak about karma, but they do not think about uh, emotional damage as karma. So if you are one on the planet right now who is operating or behaving in a heartless way, uh, you will have karmic uh, cycles that you will have to go through to understand and feel inside yourself in future incarnations or when you are returned to the astral, uh, to understand exactly what your actions, your power-based actions did by leaving heart consciousness out. For any action that is being taken on the planet right now that does not include at least 30 to 40% of heart energy in it, 
is going to be dragged backwards very quickly. You will start to see that as you go through the coming couple of decades, it will be harder and harder for, we will say, heartless actions to be enacted on the planet. And that will not be pretty, by the way. Some of you are celebrating hearing that, but mm, steal your hearts for it will be some highly volatile and emotional times from time to time on earth in the coming decades. That is part of what you will see, but you are here to usher in a new wave of consciousness that does start to appear in your world in a bigger, brighter and stronger way from 2024 to 2025 onwards. So as you go past those years and you enter into the coming decades more and more, you will continue to see some of this, shall we say, fight between light and dark that you are seeing playing out now. Uh, but the momentum for the light and the innovation for the light and the structures that the light will be building will be far more evident than they are right now. So there will still be some dissonance on planet Earth. Uh, that is certainly not expected to evolve uh, for at least uh, the rest of this century. Uh, and then it has the chance uh, after uh, 2080 and beyond to be starting to be more of a distant memory within the culture and within the energy grids of this earth. But right now we say all of this to you not to make some of you despair that things are not happening faster, but to wake you up and shake you up to the reality that you are here to help birth heart consciousness on the planet. And that does not mean you will see heart consciousness in action every day. And that does not mean you will always be the beneficiary of being on the receiving end of heart consciousness. But it does mean that whenever you feel knocked off your center by life or by a person or by a situation, you have within you the power to reconnect to your own heart, your own spirit, and perhaps through the support, love and spirit of others, get yourself back up off the ground when it is time and again be a custodian of heart energy on this earth. Some of you are already doing this and you've been doing it magnificently for many, many years. The time of valuing heart energy is about to mm, come in in a whole new way to earth. The time of valuing uh, women in a whole new way is about to appear also uh, for it was such a clever thing uh, to uh, demote the women in the way that they were demoted some thousands of years ago. It was such a clever thing to try and uh, cut their value out, uh, which is really quite uh, hilarious when you think about it, for it takes a woman for any man to be born on earth. And yet this story has perpetuated. And by the way, we are not just pointing the finger here at men, for uh, we will say the majority of men on the planet right now are also disabled in their true power by what some of you refer to as the patriarchy, uh, that is also changing. So the return of heart consciousness, which by the way, beats very strongly in men too. Uh, it is just that you were given these very traditional transactional roles for men and women, which are now breaking down in the paradigm. They were never true for the human soul. They were simply an outfit designed to keep you all tight, organized, limited. It is all beginning to break down. And there are those of you who are pioneers of breaking that down. There are those of you who are kicking the walls down. There are those of you who are helping others to see it, to feel it, to process it, to be with it. So take a breath for a moment. And as you take this breath, feel this magnificent heart chakra and center of yours. Your greatest sadness is when the heart is unacknowledged. When the heart is unacknowledged by another human being, when the heart is unacknowledged in a global action, you feel it, so many of you who are wired that way, because you can feel the missing part for humanity and it grieves you to watch humanity play out the same mistake over and over again. But here is the good news. 
the one, we will say, or more positive side effect of this very fractious, difficult, and tense period you are in right now is going to be that even though it is uncomfortable at times, you are going to see a rising up among humanity of humans saying no to the heartlessness humans owning their own heart in an all new way. And that is why there are so many things that will come your way that will try to cut the heart out. So if you see or feel anything that seems inhumane, it is important for you to stand for it or stand up to it. For some of you, that will be through your voice and your action. For others, that might just be energetic. You might say inside yourself, no, I do not agree with this. It might not be your fight to get involved with in a human way, but it is very important that rather than feeling barraged or a victim to the heartlessness that you see on your planet, that instead you own that your power is in your heart and your heart is seeing, feeling, tracking everything. Your mind and your heart are not always allowed to be connected. Again, this comes from conditioning, it comes from society. There is an amnesia about the heart in society. Now, uh, by all means, we spoke earlier about pets. Mm, isn't it interesting that many of you will talk about how much you love your pet sometimes more than your husband? Ha! Huh. Uh, nothing wrong with that, by the way. We are not judging your relationship. We are just again reminding you of the purity of heart that exists between an animal and a human sometimes because the human is not in the animal kingdom. So just as you can love your pet in the most unreserved way, perhaps you see your two pets having a fight with each other. They are no different to humans. They are in their own species, in their own game, and that's okay. But the purity that you have in your heart is because you are not wrapped up in their language, in their way of thinking. You are not gridded into all of these areas that can actually limit the love you feel for them. Well, so it is the same for all of you in terms of your approach to each other now. It is time to get a little more in your heart as you can allow it towards all other human beings. Even if you do not agree with what someone is doing or perhaps you are mm, a big opponent to what they are doing, by all means, step away from them or boundary them, whatever you need to do but don't go black in your heart toward them, for then you simply take on the same virus. Understand, they are a wounded soul. Perhaps they are here to play a role. It is unfortunate but true that some of your most, mm, we will say, uh, undesired people on the planet, some of the figures throughout history who many of you have observed to do terrible things to whole swathes of people, uh, what we can tell you is, despite how you feel about them or their role or the role they played, they, like all souls, were also playing out a role on earth that perhaps helped illuminate an area that you as humans needed to better safeguard in the future. Uh, you as humans needed to not take for granted. You see, the reason that humans like to fight and have been, we will say, trained to fight each other is there is an energy that moves through your body that is your heart fire, and it is the energy of fight. It doesn't mean it's going to annihilate other people or destroy others. That is where the human game has asked you to play with your heart fire. That is why so many of your entertainment modules uh, show humans being horribly violent to one another. Isn't that interesting? Interesting to notice that. Interesting to notice that is what you are asked to put your attention on. Interesting how devalued those entertainment modules uh, where love is present are in your society. And have you often wondered why some of the most beloved, we will say movies in this case, mm, are so adored by so many people and yet there aren't that many of them? It's interesting, isn't it, how love and heart frequency as the main vessel is not always allowed through into the mainstream. And the more you see this, the more you will see it. The more you will notice that is how this world has been built. But it is your time to rebuild. 
and to build from heart consciousness. So whatever touches or lights up your heart or anywhere that you think you can help someone soothe, feel or amplify their heart, that is a good use of your time. Whenever you feel defeated by the bigger picture out there, focus on the small one. Where can you bring some heart to a person, an individual, a group, or feel it for yourself? Your hearts are not lost. They are just not communicating with each other in the way they are designed to. What we mean by this is, you are a hive on earth, a hive of humans, and you have been asked to disconnect and segregate your hearts from each other in ways that you were never designed to do. And that is okay. That is the past. That is what has happened in the past. But you are now at the beginning of a time where over the coming decades and indeed this whole century, the rewiring of the human heart connection, heart to heart, needs to and will spread and permeate more. For what makes you unique as human beings is this heart center of yours, which has a universal and divine intelligence running through it. That is why there have been so many ways that you have been divorced from it through your training, your conditioning, your programming. But all of you want to return to this, this ability to feel and connect heart to heart. So, that is the era that you are in. And Earth is the expanding heart center in the universe right now, and where galactic issues are concerned, Earth reclaiming its heart and the humans reclaiming the heart of Earth is very important. So, what can you do today to put yourself more in your own heart? And what can you do today that might help someone else find, feel, or know theirs. Good questions to be asking yourself as you continue to walk through this era. In peace and in love to all. You might want to just put your hand on your heart for a moment especially if you felt it moving or releasing or expanding. I have mine hovering above my body just because I have a microphone there, but the contact feels good. So try just placing it on the center of your chest. And in a moment we'll go into the next and final channel, which is our relationship to oneness, the highest octave. Okay, so we're going to have our final message with the Z's, uh, which is our relationship to oneness, the highest octave, as they keep referring to it lately. Uh, so if you're ready to begin, wonderful. If you think you need a break, and you're kind of a little full, because sometimes when we're doing any kind of frequency work or healing work, it's good to listen to your body. If you're feeling a little bit like, well, I think I've taken in enough, press pause or come back to it later. Um, but for now, this will be our closing message from them. And uh, at the end of the channel, I will come back on and say goodbye and we will bid each other farewell. But for now, here is the Z's on our relationship to oneness. Good. Well, uh, the relationship to oneness is no different to the relationship to oneself in that you as a human soul are a universe unto yourself. And you are a universe not just because of how you are composed today on your uh, inner world of personality, what some of you refer to as ego, your physical body, you are a universe unto yourself because you can connect in a sensory, intuitive and mm, cosmic way to everything through this body of yours, through this mind. Many of you have already trained your minds through 
various techniques or meditative ways to allow yourself to feel a sense of expansion, a sense of oneness. Oneness is the state in which there is no division or friction energy. It is that part of you that can travel into and connect with anything and anyone. And it is quite a heavenly state, for it is unity. It is you allowing yourself to unify uh, and have unity with um, any aspect of the universe uh, in form or in ether uh, that you choose to. So, from our perspective, we are, we would say, uh, in one of the higher octaves of oneness, but even we uh, are not at the top level of oneness, for we can put it this way to you. Uh, the one who can step beyond all of their earthly self and identity and or oversee everything uh, in the universe can take a vast view of everything they are gazing upon, feeling, seeing, they are able to understand the oneness of it all and how it connects. But when you get into a very single focus area of your life or your growth uh, or the evolution that you are moving through, then you start to mm, heal small compartments in your life, your humanity, your soul, that are always designed to bring you back to oneness. You are always trying to return home to your connection to everything. However, humans are often exploring their disconnection. Disconnection to others, disconnection to the world, disconnection to what doesn't feel right. For when you incarnate as a soul into a human body, you not only arrive with a set of predetermined lessons based on other lifetimes you have lived, and also sometimes whole new lessons uh, that pertain to your mission, your role, and what you want to experience in life. But the third aspect is the genetic and ancestral line that you become born into. So, you may be playing with themes or healing areas from your genetic family line. You may incarnate as an ambassador of love or on a mission of love into a human body where love has been a great challenge in the genetic line for that family. So you come in wired to uh, learn a lot, grow a lot, stretch a lot. And in doing so, not only do the foundational energies and emotions that you um, are born into set you up for high contrast and help you really double down on your mission of love and figure out how to truly sustain love even in unsupported circumstances, but you also heal that line. You affect the prior timeline of this family, and that helps this family to rebalance. And if you like, uh, many of you take on uh, the karma work for anything from 8 to 32 members of your ancestral line, and you do this very unconsciously. And it used to be in prior times, say a couple of hundred years ago, you might be affecting more like 4 to 12 members of your ancestral line, but energy has amplified and time has sped up, so you are now able to do more. But understand that you are not only dealing with your genetic line when this happens, you are also changing the ancestry lines of the planet. For when you go back through human history, there were what we would call power points. There were moments where human history was poised to break through and get more deeply into its heart consciousness, its energy of oneness, and its understanding of its cosmic origins and its place in the universe. And those were often thwarted or stopped. So, why you are here at this time right now is to understand and bring more oneness to the planet. But, and this is a big but, and it is very important to understand this, you may never see oneness in your lifetime at work on the whole planet, but to be attached to that is to miss the point. Many people who worked on building great endeavors for humanity didn't live to see the final product, but their labor, their energy, their love, their wisdom contributed to making it happen. And that 
is why you are all here at this time. You are here to experience oneness more in yourselves and you are here to seed oneness more on the planet. You are not doing it alone. Humans are not responsible for seeding oneness alone. There are whole teams of beings who you cannot see with your eye who are working on uh, healing some of the fractured energetics on Earth from some of the more barbaric experiences that have played out uh, among humans. Uh, what you might call the anti-oneness moments. And you are seeing many of those right now, by the way. You will see it in any form of segregation, division, separation, anything that wants you to think of another human being as other, as unequal. Anything that wants to divide, organize, and put humans in a hierarchy that is not about equality is uh, trying to take you back a few, we will say, uh, layers or octaves. Oneness is the highest octave. And for any of you as light warriors, for any of you as awakened beings, the reason for you to work on behalf of oneness is because it feels better than anything else. To the human being, a state of oneness is bliss. We will give you an example. The reason so many of you enjoy uh, drug use uh, either recreational or in some cases medicinal, is because for the duration of that drug, uh, unless you are processing some shadow, which can happen a lot with opening yourself to substances, uh, you will experience the oneness of the universe. So there are many of you who use plant medicine to experience this, and that is all well and good and has its place. The bigger question is, how do you integrate it when you come back? Mm, does it make you feel even more driven to find more ways to root that in your life? Or does it make you dependent on the drug? Because it's the only place that you can find it and get it. And the more you, we will say, hammer on the door of the drug, the more potential there can be for you to start to lose yourself. So why we bring this up is the state of oneness is a state of bliss. It is a state of love. It is a state of feeling connected to everything. And it is a state of peace. Bliss, love, connection, peace. These are some of the notes within the octave of oneness. This is part of the oneness symphony. So understand that any time you bring yourself back to feeling any of those or you are working to create those frameworks, structures, or moments for other people, you will feel back in your heart. You will feel deeply connected to your soul and your humanity. And for many of you, you will feel relief. In much the same way that the one turning to the drug for relief feels relief in the moment they are experiencing it, oneness will always bring you a great relief for it will plug you back into the hive. Even if your experience of all of the other humans that day was very fractious or difficult, if meditation is what brings you back to your state of oneness, you know that sitting and meditating for 20 minutes is going to expand your energy field again, returning you to oneness. Oneness is simply another way of saying the energy field of everything and everyone that you are deeply connected to at every moment. And feeling that is quite extraordinary and quite magnificent. And in that you feel the potential for magnificent creation, for magnificent healing. How often are the stories you are told on earth, and here we will focus on your news media, which we know many of you are already highly aware is manipulative, but mm, how many of you in those news stories see the potential in those stories for magnificent creation or magnificent healing. Now, the vibration of your news media tends to be fear. We're not saying there isn't information in there. We're not saying there aren't certain outlets or certain journalists that uh, are fighting for the truth. Uh, but the game of those outlets tends to be fear, manipulation, and control as a whole. It is wonderful uh, that you are beginning to have many courageous individuals changing that narrative by bringing out what they call the good news channel. We can tell you that if everyone was focused on a good news channel every day uh, for three years, this planet would look radically different. 
than the channels that you currently have. So you have to, have to ask yourself, well, why are those channels still a part of what we are focusing on? And that is very much the revolution of this time. It is where humanity starts to wake up and realize that you, the humans, are the society, not the grids that you have been put in that are designed to knowingly and unconsciously lower your vibration. When you lower your vibration, you enter separation. When you enter separation, you lose your power. The lights go out. Oneness is all about connection, collaboration. So we can speak to you about oneness as an energy, uh, but it is far more effective for us to speak to you about oneness as an action. If something in your life has upset you, fractured you, hurt you, damaged you, it is such an act of love for you to look to heal that part of yourself. It is such an act of your desire to return to oneness that you would go and work with a healer, a therapist, or do your research, do your uh, due diligence on that area of your life that needs some of your attention. That is you returning yourself to oneness. When a person in your midst expresses the difficulty they are having and you either because of the words they say or just intuitively feel they need your help and you can give it and you can offer it and it's not going to cost you or put you on the floor, it is something you can do. That act of giving gives you something because you are fostering oneness. That, dear ones, is why you are here. It is the best part of why you are here. Why do you think humans value joy and love and parties? These are high moments for you where you are celebrating, where you are being together in joy. Joy is five times more powerful than fear. And yet fear is five times more sown into your collective than joy. The story of fear is something you are invited to over and over again in your systems, in your narratives. So you have to work. That is why it is work being here on earth right now. You have to work to maintain your joy, your connection. And you also have to be realistic. As Lee will often say, if you are on the floor right now, if you are having a terrible time in your life, that is not the time to try and work to get to joy. That is the time to soothe yourself, to heal yourself, to give yourself the recovery time you need. Every human journey goes through its ups and downs. If you have been dealt several blows of late, it is most important to heal and if applicable, to understand how to avoid those blows in the future. There are some blows we understand like the sudden loss of a loved one to death. That is not something you can avoid in the future, but perhaps the blows came through human drama, betrayal, heartbreak, sudden endings in romantic relationships that you did not see coming. These are the times to investigate and to not only heal your heart, but educate your heart. That is why the work of healers, of those who have a connection to spirituality is so important at this time on earth. And it is a very self-serving pastime, by the way. It feels very joyous to be connected. So those of you who are wired to be this mission on Earth, you are not only doing important work for the planet, you are living in a frequency that is most beneficial for you. For to lose that frequency in yourself would feel deathly. It is okay if you are marginalized. It is okay if you are not seen by all or appreciated by all. That is not why you are doing it. Your heart lives in oneness. It comes from oneness. It feels oneness. It senses oneness. And all you need do is cultivate a relationship with your heart. This means looking out for your well-being, your sense of balance, your sense of peace, your sense of joy, and including it in your daily and weekly routine.
Your heart is your divine intelligence. And it is that divine intelligence that will spread across the world and that will bring repair, reform and transformation to this planet in the coming century. And you elected to be here for part of that. There are no mistakes when you incarnate on earth. You come here for a mission. And your mission in this lifetime is to elevate your heart and the hearts of others in the most magnificent and illuminating ways. Good. A pleasure to be with you all in peace and in love. Okay, so if you still have your eyes closed, there's no rush to open them. You can stay where you are. You may want to take in the message a little more, or you may still be somewhere out there right now, just coming back slowly to your body. But if you feel a little out there, I invite you to just slowly return to your body. Call yourself back into this beautiful body of yours. Thank this body of yours as you enter it again for bringing you to this moment, to this day, to this life. Thank it for any of the nice surprises that are coming your way in the weeks and months that you don't yet know about. And you may just want to put a hand on your heart and uh, remind your heart you might want to say something to it along the lines of, I've got you, I'm going to look after you, I'm going to be with you, I'm going to befriend you, I'm going to love you in a whole new way. Heart energy is contagious. We love it and it's something that we feed on with each other and move through and it nurtures us and nourishes us. So I also hear the message from these guys about heart consciousness is a lot of our work here. And I also want to remind you, if you are in your dark night of the soul or one of your dark nights right now, it's so important to just heal yourself as much as you can and to get the people and the things in place that will help you do that. Sometimes light workers have an overdeveloped sense of responsibility. And so on a day when they really should just be resting and recovering, there's a voice in the head going, well, I'm not out there helping people. You shouldn't be today. Today you help you and you let support and love come in for you. And you perhaps say to the universe, I need some support. I need some help. Please send me some help. Angels, please help guide me through this process. And you'll get up again. You'll get back on your feet and you'll start doing everything you're meant to be doing here. You know, my intention for this time that we've had together was to hopefully give you some new aha moments, clarity, perhaps a new perspective, hopefully some energetic sustenance. And I also hope that I've given some of you a gentle push or a few new ideas on how you can connect with your soul on a daily basis. If I heard my guides on the tube train in London, you can sit at your kitchen table and speak to your soul. It really is a lot easier than any of us think. And someone said to me many years ago, they went, wow, Lee, what you do, does it just feel extraordinary? And my answer was, no, to me it's very ordinary, but it does feel like home. So when I channel, I feel at home. And to me, it feels a very ordinary act at this point because I'm used to doing it and I have been for 23 years. But I understand that when we sit on the outside, we often view something as extraordinary that in fact can become ordinary for us. So if any of this was new to you, I really want you to play with connecting with your soul and your higher self. If you enjoyed and 
If you're still watching in part four, I'm guessing you didn't not like what we just did. If you enjoyed it enough to be curious about playing with writing to yourself, to your soul every day, the results, especially over time, can be profound in how they change the richness with which you experience your human life, your soul life, and your ability to connect more to oneness. Thank you so much everyone for tuning in and drink lots of water after this workshop. A lot can move through you and water is a wonderful conduit. Your cells will need the water, but it also helps us flush things. And if you are feeling like you went through a lot, I always recommend a shower or a bath Getting your body into water can help you integrate and ground. So, lots of love from me to you. Until next time. For those of us who are sensitive, intuitive, or walking a spiritual path, it is our practices and the support that we have in our life that often is the key to how well we can walk through life. Nine years ago, I created the portal to be an answer to that need for members of my community who wanted to go more in depth with my work. And while my work is still very much a centerpiece of the portal, we have now added other teachers, other voices, other offerings, so that the portal can become a well-rounded place for you to receive nourishment and be uplifted shifted and supported every single month. Here is a look at some of the offerings that you receive every month as a Portal member. Once a month, I do a 90-minute live video broadcast. Don't worry if you can't be there live, everything in the Portal is provided to you as a replay. But doing it live is a chance for me to be with you as a community. And in that broadcast, I channel I speak about the energies of the month and expand on my monthly energy update and also take some community questions. Every month you will also receive an MP3 and the MP3 will either be a channeled message from my guides the Z's set to original music from Davor Bozik or it will be an energy alchemy meditation or some other energy teaching. These will be put into your members library and you will have access to them to stream and download. We also give you access to a classics library where we take eight classic recordings from recent years so that you can listen to more. Qigong and wellness teacher Stephen Washington gives you an exclusive Qigong sequence every single month. It's called the Body Energy Update and he takes the themes from my monthly energy updates on YouTube and creates a movement sequence for you designed to support you and your process as we go through each month. Stephen is also a wonderful meditation teacher, and so you will have access to a library of short, digestible meditations from him. As soon as you join, you will also get access to our bonus Intuitive Power Workshop. This was a tour that we took to several different countries a couple of years ago, and we had it professionally filmed. So you will be able to watch a four and a half hour video workshop where both myself and Stephen teach you about accessing and owning your intuition in a deeper way. And to round all of this out, we have special member discounts on courses of mine. We also have special music playlists each month. One set of songs designed to help soothe you and one set of songs designed to get you moving. And last year, we brought to the portal something I have wanted to do for a very long time, The Portal Presents. It's where I get to invite some incredible teachers, creatives, healers, musicians into the portal. And every month we spotlight one of them where they deliver an on-camera teaching specifically for our portal members. It's a beautiful new feature. We have had some incredible people coming in and we've got some amazing people lined up for the next year. And the final aspect of the portal is mine and my team's favorite. It's the community energy. So as well as having a private members forum inside the portal for those of you who aren't on social media, we also have a private moderated Facebook group exclusively for Portal members. This is where so many members get to share what they're experiencing, 
things they're learning, people they're enjoying, and essentially connecting you with people from all over the world who are focused on similar interests to you. My aim with the portal has always been to offer you as much value for your membership as possible. And I feel like in the last year or so, we have really been able to maximize that. So we look forward to welcoming you to the portal and we hope it is a place that can nourish your mind, your body and your soul. Big love.